Hello there everyone. Today I want to show you how to make this wire work tie pin. And in this case I've just written dad on this one just because it would be perfect for Father's Day. Maybe as a present or something. So this is the tie pin. And it's going to sit nice in the tie like this. So this is the back of it. So you have these little prongs going around the side. And all you do is slot it in and out just like this. So it's really easy to put on and take off again. And it grabs onto it nicely because we're making it just the size that we want it to be and then you just slot it in from one side and then the other side as well and then place it exactly where it needs to go so you obviously judge the sizing as well as we're making it so it's quite a nice and simple technique here to make the tie pin and you can make lots of different words or names or personalize it however you want to and even start making some designs instead as well so if you want to learn how to make this tie pin then keep watching so it's these wires that we're going to need. Now I've got two different gauges of wire here and they're both regular round wire. The first one is a 1mm. This is going to be the base wire for the piece. And then this is a 0.4mm and we're going to use this to wrap around and hold the whole piece together. So let's get a wire ready and let's get started. So then what we need to do is cut a length of a 1mm wire here. And what I have is about 50 centimeters. Now this can vary all depending on what design you want to do or what word you want to write because that can take up more wire. But for now I'm just going to be using the 50 centimeters. So then before we start actually making the tie pin, what I recommend that you do is get a tie out. So for instance, got one here. And we just need to do a bit of preparation work first of all before we actually make the tie pin because we need to be able to reference our tie to figure out how large we need the tie pin to be. So it's going to obviously fit in multiple ties because it's going to fit a little bit up and down. Because as you can see, a tie actually graduates a little bit, so it gets wider and then it's narrower in certain places. So for that reason, what I then recommend that you do is you kind of do up the tie so as it would sit properly while wearing it. And then you find out where you'd want the tie pin to sit roughly and then keep hold of that place. Then you put it against a piece of paper, get out a pencil and then you just, where it is you want it to sit on the tie, you just reference that, put a little mark on each side here, just like that, and then we have this, and then from there we know that's the distance, the width we need the actual tie pen to end up being, and then what we can do is make a design in between this, that's going to fill out that space, because that's going to then sit on the front of the tie, and then from here what we can do is make because I want to write a word, you can also make a design, this is just the kind of basics of it. I'm just going to make a straight line from one side to the other. And then you can use it as reference, so for instance if you want to write a word, what you can then do is write it on here to reference back to, so you know what how you want it to look, but then also size wise, because you need to gauge how loud say you need the letters to be, and also the whole word so it's going to fit in this space. So like I said, you can either make a design or write a word. In this case, I'm going to be writing a word. So I'm going to write dad because Father's Day is coming up. So it's roughly like this it's going to look like. So you can see, I've just used the two reference points there to make sure the word isn't going to be roughly in the middle of my piece. But then just to show you a few other examples as well, is I made another one here. Now this is a name, or rather a nickname, and then just some hats. So you can add a bit more to it as well. Make it really as personalized as you want to. So whether it's someone's actual name or a nickname or whatever you want to. And then I've also done a few where I thought of some designs that could look nice on the tie. So again, I'm using the straight line there and I just made this design that would look nice on the tie itself, I think. Another one is this. So this is a really nice woven kind of looking one, a bit Celtic inspired. So that looks really nice on the tie as well and you've got design on both sides. So I'm not using the straight line here. You can really do whatever you want to. But then, like I said, I'm going to write the word dad for this one. And I'm also going to use a few basic tools to help me do this. So the first one is just some basic chain nose pliers here. And then also, I'm going to be using some six-step bell making pliers as well. So you have these six steps where you can make sure you get the exact size that you want to. You can also use round nose pliers. I just find these really helpful. So we then need to get a length of wire out here. And we're going to work in the middle of our wire first of all, because we need to write the word first, if that's what you're doing. We need to write that across the middle of the wire, so I'm going to start a little bit off the side from the middle there, because obviously I'm going to use a bit of wire to actually write the word. So I'm going to start roughly in the middle there, like I said, 
grab my chain nose pliers to begin with because what I want to start with is write the D. Now obviously like I said you can write whatever you want to or do whatever design, you just do your own thing then. You can just use the basic typing as the basic design for it. But then I'm going to start with the D and then I'm going to take this tail on the right side of my pliers, keep hold of the wire with my pliers here and then just, it helps if you hold it a bit further out the length of wire and you can use your finger as well to help make a nice curve. So this is the round part of the D. Bring it back in so basically your two tails are going to come down the same side next to each other. And then we're getting the curve in there. Then you just need to decide how large you want it to be. So your letters here. Now I like them to not be too large but also not too small because you obviously want to be able to see what it says. But again as we're referencing back to the little, if you did a sketch, that can help you determine the size as well. So you need to obviously make sure whatever word you are writing that's going to fit within that space like I said. So just get this curve back, can help with your finger like I said, and just get the size that you want. You can also use a tool or a mandrel to get this curve in place, like the six step bell making plier that I just showed you as well. It's completely up to you and what you feel most comfortable with. But then when you have that, and you're pretty happy with it, then I'm going to go up on the other side, just make sure the curve is just how I want it to be. Then we need to come back down and complete the D and make the flat side of the D. So this is a capital D that I'm making here. So I'm going to grab hold on the wire with my pliers here where I want that bend to be. I'm going to take the tail that I'm working with and put an angle in. So just press this wire against my pliers and have it come straight down. And just take a bit of time Make sure that this is nice and straight and you can just sharpen up this angle a bit if you want to by going from one side to the other side of that corner and just squeezing it a bit. That makes it a bit sharper. And then we can look at it here from the front. You can see you basically have your completed D. Now what I actually want for my D here, it all depends on the letters that you're doing. I actually want this tail that I'm working with to come down behind the other one. So I'm just going to quickly and gently swap them around like that. If it opens up a little bit, just put it back. So there we have the final D. Now obviously this wire that we're working with is going straight down. We need to come back out towards the side so we can continue making the other letters as well. So all I'm going to do is take my chain nose pliers again, place it down where I want that next corner to be. So basically, on the inside of the D, but on that straight line, right by that corner here, where the curve starts as well, I'm going to bend my wire against the pliers here, straight out to the side, and make sure as well throughout, try and keep your wire as straight as possible, without kinks and bends. Obviously it's going to shape itself as you're working with it, but then just keep straightening it out as you go. We want to make sure then when we're making the letter that we're working with, we don't get a kink or a bend somewhere in that letter. Keep it as nice and straight as possible. So it's coming straight out to the side here, ready to then go over a bit to make the next letter. And that is then the A that's in the middle of the word. So I'm going to put my pliers in where I want the next letter to begin. You also just have to judge the space in between the letters here because we don't want it to be too far a gap between them or too close together, it's going to look a bit weird. So just try and judge that as you go. I'm going to place my pliers here, so where the bend is going to be is on the outside of my pliers here. I'm going to bend the tail that I'm working with upwards. Just something like this, straight upwards is fine. It's coming up there, and then I'm going to switch over to my six step bell making pliers. What I'm going to be using in this case just for my sizing is the third smallest step on here and then I'm going to just place it as far down as I can because as you can see I can't get any further down than this then I'm just going to start rolling it downwards a little bit because I want to get a curve in here because there's obviously an A and that's 
pretty rounded. So something like this. And then this is kind of starting to point downwards. You can just pull this straight out to the side again. And you can then judge it as well because obviously this A is a small letter where the first D is capital one and it's just tall there. So you want the A to be about half the size of the D. So once I'm happy with that little curve, then what I'm going to do is switch over to my chain nose pliers again. And then if you imagine you're going to have the corner of the A up here. So what I'm going to do is grab hold of that. And then this long tail that we're working with, I need to bend that back on myself. And I'm going to come around the front of my word here. So it's just straight back on itself so you get this little tight U there. What we need to do then is squeeze this tight because then you're going to have two wires lying on top of each other when you look from the side. I'm going to squeeze this tight because we want them to be as tight as possible. So we don't really have too much of a gap there. So you just place it far down the jaws of your pliers there to have more control. And then it's coming straight out here so we need it to come back down because this long end of the wire we now need to follow the curve that we already made. So I'm going to place my pliers back in in the same place that they were before. And that third largest one. And then you can just use that to guide your wire around again. Like I said, just follow the little curve that you already made and come all the way around and come back up again to that little, like I said, it's going to be the little corner up here. You can also do a lot of it without pliers. And like that, I'm just going to bring it down a bit further. So I want this wire to come up and meet with that little, you can almost call it a little prong that I just made up there that's what they use for as well. Come up and meet like that and then to complete the A I'm gonna grab hold right before that corner there where the two wires meet with my chain nose pliers grab hold of it nicely, take the long end bend it back on itself again over the top of the word not down behind but over the top of it so we get another one again where the two wires are going to be lying on top of each other. Squeeze this tight. So it's got the same tightness as the other little prong you could say that we made. So basically just the wires are lying right tight next together. You don't really want a gap there. Grab hold of that again just to keep hold of it. And then coming down here I'm going to have my wire come back out to the side to obviously continue the word because then this is the completed A so we can just manipulate the wire however we want it to sit come back up to the side here make sure it's nice and straight as you're coming out and then this is obviously where we need to then get ready for the D so for that again I have my wire coming out to the side in a straight line there so we also want to be aware of as you're making your letters as you go along that they all end on the same bottom line there and that I'm going to take then my six step bell making pliers again because we're going to make the round part of the D this is also going to be a small D and this is then going to have the bottom part of the D is going to have the same height as the A but then obviously the rest of it is taller as well I'm going to grab that take the tail of my wire back around just keep going here make a full circle reposition your pliers if you have to so it's going to have roughly the same height as the A I just want to open it up a little bit more actually something like that and then we want the tail here to come back up the side so we'll go straight upwards from the word just like that because then we always need to do kind of the back of the D so there we go pointing straight upwards and then to complete that I'm going to grab my chain nose pliers again place them where I want the height of the D to be 
just a bit before because you got to remember when you're bending wire, it doesn't bend exactly in that spot, it just adds an extra one or two millimetres. So you just want to account for that. So roughly the same height as the first D. So bend the tail back on itself, again over the top of the word, like that. Squeeze the kind of little prong that we made here together to make it tight so you don't have a gap. And then again, these two wires are the same really, but the two lengths of wire are now lying on top of each other, coming down here. Now it's pointing straight downwards. We again just want it to go out to the side. So I'm going to grab it from the front where I want it to bend outward. So obviously go in a straight line just along with the other words as well. So just grab hold of it. and then bend it outwards and then we can always keep checking it so it fits with the word that's a little bit too far up so just keep manipulating it here until you then have your completed D and your wire is going straight out again creating that bottom line on the word as well now that we then have the full word ready here we then need to use this to make the rest of the type in and what I'm going to do is first of all reference back to the little sketch that we made. So then my little sketch here that I can then reference back to. I take my word, I lie it on top of that, get it in the middle. And then you can see once I have it in the middle here, we then know where we want the tie pin to end on the sides there. But what we've got to remember is we, we need to make little prongs on the ends as well. That's going to go around the tie, around to the back and grab onto it. And that's what's going to hold it in place. So we need to just get those in place before we actually make any bends here. So I'm going to again grab I'm going to grab my ruler here and then we need to add a bit of length onto here from the ends. So how long really depends on what you want. I would say about one to one and a half centimeters should be fine. I'm going to grab my pencil as well and then I'm going to go out from the very end and measure I think I'm going to say one and a half centimeters. They don't need to be too long because you've got to remember they're coming from both sides and I'm going to hold, hold on to the tie from both sides here. And that one, and that actually goes right to the edge of the paper, just like that. So now I know how long I need to make the prongs and I've measured that here. So I can use that as reference. So what I need to do now is place my word in the middle, just where I have the reference that I did a little sketch there and then I know that where I need to make my bend is not where I um, did the original little marks because that's just the width of the type and when it's done I need to actually make a bend in my wire where I did my new little marks because those are going to be the ends of the prongs so I'm going to grab onto that and then keep hold of that with my pliers and then we need to basically make that little prong there so what I'm going to do is right now I'm on the back but it doesn't matter I'm going to grab the tail of my wire we need to bend that back on itself but it needs to come down below the word so I'm bending it downwards here it slipped out grab onto it and then bend it back on itself below the word. Make sure your tail goes below the word, that's the most important thing because it's kind of going to be the baseline underneath there and where we're also going to finish it off. Then again I'm going to grab onto the very end and squeeze it together to make it as tight as possible to make a little prong there just like that. So that's one side. Now what I want to do is actually do the exact same thing on the other side so again, reference back to it, put the word in the middle, just in the same place. You can also use the mark on the other side there for the prong, so you know where to place it. Then place your pliers in the right position for the next prong. Again, remember, you need to come bend the wire so it bends towards the bottom of the word. So if you're looking from the front here, I'm bending it towards the bottom and back on itself and again this one also just needs 
to be squeezed nice and tight together to finish that little prong. So you get more control by going to the base of your pliers here but sometimes it can still slip like that and it kind of twists all you do is just untwist it again to get it nice and flat next to each other so just like this getting it nice and tight but now obviously what you can see it looks a little bit messy because we have these two tails of the wire just randomly kind of crossing over each other that is then what we're going to then fix now along with also fasten the whole thing together because obviously it's a bit loose now so then what I want to just do first is because obviously these are a little bit in the way I don't want to cut them completely down just yet because I'm going to do that once we start it weaving as well but I'm going to cut them a little bit shorter so I'm just going to grab my plus cutters here to cut off a little bit excess makes it just a little bit easier to deal with So what I basically want to end up doing as well is the two wires are going to end up meeting each other. So if you imagine, I think it's here are the ends of the wire once we cut them all the way down. I want the very ends to basically be sitting like this up against each other. So that's why I'm not cutting them all the way down because there's still room for movement here. So I want to just allow for that because you don't want to end up cutting them too short. Like that. So this is the point we're at now. They're still overlapping a bit but that's fine. What I want to just do now then is actually start doing a bit of weaving as well. So this is where I then want to get a length of my 0.4mm and either you can cut a length of about a metre to a metre and a half or you can just work with it from the reel because we're just wrapping it around. We're not going to be doing an actual weave. All I'm going to be doing is wrapping this around the two base wires there that are lined next to each other. So again, first of all I just want to get my sketch out for reference just to see where we need to start weaving because this is again where you can see I've got the ends of the prongs there and where I made the last marks but what we then need to do, I'm not going to be wrapping these two wires together all the way out from the edge, I'm going to start from where pretty much roughly where the first mark is so the very first ones that we did that measures is going to be the length that's going to be at the front of the tie so that's what I want to do and now all I'm going to do is start weaving this or wrapping it rather just going to put my tail of my weaving wire, wrapping wire, around. Leave a little bit of a tail just to keep hold of. And then we can just start out wrapping it together first of all. All you do is wrap around the front, around the back, around both of them together. That's all I'm going to do with these. There's no fancy weave or anything. All I would say is just try and keep the wraps nice and tight together so it gets nice and even and neat looking. But now before I do too much more, I just want to make sure, because if you're making the wraps quite tight, you won't necessarily be able to move them that easily. So I just want to make sure that I'm doing it in the right place. So that's pretty good. And you can always just use a little bit of the tail if you needed to add another couple of wraps. So I'm going to continue wrapping here. So this on this side, like I said, these two, the ends of the wire are still sticking and kind of overlapping there and obviously they're not going to continue doing that I'm just going to keep wrapping a little bit once I get close to that point and they're then going to get in the way that I can't continue wrapping so I now wrapped a little bit further here and I'm kind of getting to a point where this one length of my wire is starting to get a little bit in the way now what we need to decide is where we want the join to be for these two ends of the wire so it can really be anywhere but what I would recommend is that you try and do it in a place where you have a base wire there on the top part so either during the word or just before or just after that's a little bit longer so say not right say the bottom of the A there I wouldn't make the join there because there's not going to be that much to wrap around I would do it probably on this one in this case I'll probably do it right after the word to be honest but there could be another way as well depending on what word you've written or what design you've done so the D would work as well or in between the D and the A but I think I'm actually going to do it at the end of the word so because of that what I'm then going to do is just cut down this length a little bit more because it's getting in my way I'm still not going to cut it all the way just because I want to do that just to make sure it gets just right a little bit further on but now I have more space again that I can keep wrapping 
So I'm just going to wrap a bit more. The ones I get to the D here, I'm going to show you how I wrap when I incorporate the letters as well. So now I then reach the first letter here, and that's the D in my case. What I want to also make sure to do is I incorporate all the letters as much as I can to make it as sturdy as possible. So because of that, what I'm going to do is at this point you can't really have it attached to your reel anymore if you do have that, because we need to be going in through the letters. So in this case I'm coming around from the back, around to the front, my next wrap it's just right in positioning, so I actually have to go through the letter and pull all your wire through and then that next wrap is still going to continue and it's going to kind of look the same from the front but I'm just incorporating the letter as well and I would recommend at least doing a few wraps here like that the same with the spacing that I have in between the letters so here, going through the letter, I'm just going to do that a few times just until I reach the point where I can kind of incorporate that space in between the letters instead. So obviously whatever fits for, if you've written a different word or if you've done a different design, whatever fits with that, to so just incorporate, just to make it as stable as possible. So now I've gotten to the point here where I'm in between the two letters, so all I want to do is keep wrapping here as nice and tight as possible but just take my wrapping wire in between the letters instead instead of going through them we just have this little gap in between those two letters before we then reach the next one now there's just a little bit of gap on mine here where I just have to wrap around this bottom base wire on its own so just like that and that's actually what I've reached now so, again, it all depends on what letters that you've done, or what design. I'm going to have to just go through this little kind of almost triangle in that little space before the actual A starts. And then I'm just wrapping around that bottom base wire on its own. Like that. You can also just use your actual open tail there. It's going to make it much easier. But say after, if you've done your join somewhere around here, you're going to have to use the end of your wrapping wire here. Because then you've already closed it up and then go through. But that all depends on your design and also where you've done the join. So again, I'm just going to go around this single one until I then reach the point where the very bottom of the A is in the right position for me to wrap both of them together. So this bottom wire and then just around that bottom part of the A as well to make it that bit more stable. So I now kept wrapping here in the exact same way, also incorporating my letters into it and I've gotten to this point where I'm really close to the join where I want to join the two ends of the wires together. I've also cut this down a little bit, the long tail that I had left because I'm getting really close and I'm still just letting them overlap a little tiny bit but I'm getting more and more sure that I can cut it down to just have a little bit overlapping here. I'm just going to cut off just a tiny bit more to just have access to wrap right after my last letter there. So I just want to wrap that together as well to make it just that little bit more stable before I then actually cut my wires all the way down to the point where they're going to meet up just like this. Just wrap it a few times here. Now I'm ready to cut this down and what I would recommend is you do this gradually to get it just right so I don't want to I wouldn't say go in where you think it's going to be cut down and cut it because chances are it's going to end up actually being a little bit too short also because the wire can just move a little bit so what I would recommend is you just go really close to it but then just do a tiny little bit at a time so an extra millimeter or so see what it seems like and if it's sitting nice and straight first of all make sure it's all nice and straight that's why having this done as well as more stable adds a stability to it, makes it easier. But it's still not quite snapping in there, it won't go into place. So I'm just going to cut down just another tiny little bit. And then see if it'll snap in. It's still not quite, because I can't get the end of the wire to go in and meet with the other one just like this. So it just needs a tiny little bit more. But that's what I'm saying, just want to say be really careful you don't cut off too much. So you're going to end up with a big gap between the two wires, because that won't be ideal either. And see if it'll snap in now. It kind of would work best if you can kind of get it to snap in like that. 
and see it'll fit in. And I think that actually fits there. You can see the wire itself is lying right next to itself. That bend that we've done, they're lying next to each other. They're not getting pushed either towards the front or the back. And I don't have too much of a gap there. So I'm ready to wrap over this. Now you have a few options at this point. If you solder your wire, what you can do is solder these two ends together before you continue wrapping because that's going to obviously really bond them together you're not going to have that little gap there. So if you're able and you know how to do that, you can do that quite easily so when you're using the right wire. But what you can also do if you don't solder, if you don't know how to, you're not able to, then what you could do if you don't just want the gap here, if you want something in there to add that security, you could always add a little bit of glue. Obviously you make sure it's clear glue and just a tiny little bit just in between the two ends of that wire. Let it dry fully, make sure it's a glue that dries hard and not kind of stay soft when it's dry. Let it dry and then you can wrap over it so the glue is going to be completely hidden. It's just going to act as a security there. So you can use either of those methods, that's completely up to you, but if you don't know how to solder, if you can't solder, or you don't want to use the glue method and add glue to it, what you can also just do is wrap it just gently here. Because all you got to make sure of is that this wrapping wire, that it's not kind of going to creep in in that little gap that we have between those two wires here, the two base wires. That's really the main thing you got to make sure of. So what you can do is just do it gently and then go a little bit. Once you then reach that gap to make sure it doesn't go in between the wires, you can go just on the other side of the gap. Just as gently as you can. You might just need to maneuver it a little bit. What can actually help as well, because right now all this is stable. This wire is the one that's still loose. It can actually help swapping hands and using your other hand to hold this side steady. So this wire will stop moving. Just make sure it sits right. And then go in just on the other side of that gap, like I said, and wrap. Do one or two wraps, still nice and close together. And then once you have a couple of wraps here, you can then push this against the others as if you were just pushing all your wraps together to make them nice and tight. And then that pushes these wraps that you've done over the little gap without having the weaving wire, the wrapping wire here being pulled in between. And then you have those wraps that are now covering that gap. You're on the other side of the gap now. And all that's left to do is continue wrapping on this side here to the same point as we have on the other side where we just leave the length of the prong unwrapped. So that's the way you can do it as well. It's a little bit more fiddly and you just have to be aware to make sure you don't get that wrapping wire in between those base wires there, the ends of them. But it's an option as well and once you have done it and you've managed to get the wire in the right place, it does hold up really nicely. So just keep wrapping until you reach the same point. So all we have left are the prongs here. So now that I wrapped all the way to the end here, I have enough length, the same length on both sides for my prongs. I don't want to wrap them like I said. Now what's left to do is actually finish off the wrapping wire there. So I'm going to go to the back. I'm just going to get a pair of chain nose pliers. Make sure that all your wraps are pushed nice and close together. And then what I'm going to do is grab my flush cutters here and then as the wire is coming around towards the back, what I want to do is cut this, the excess down, but so I have just a tiny little tail sticking out right on the back here, because then once I then take my chain nose, go in and squeeze this down, I want the very end of this weaving wire, or wrapping wire, to basically be tucked in in between the two base wires, so it's going to get tucked in there and not sticking out, so it shouldn't catch all scratch on the tie because obviously you want to avoid that. You don't want any other wire here to damage the tie. So make sure you run your finger over it. If you can't feel it, it should be absolutely fine. If you can still feel it a little bit, you might need to cut down just a little bit more and squeeze it in again. Again, the same thing on the other side. Take it to the back here, cut it down. So the very end of the wire it's going to fit perfectly when we squeeze it down to end up in between the two base wires there. Just 
just make sure your lace wrap is nice and tight. So just like the other side, make sure you feel it. If you can't feel anything, then that's fine as well. And there we basically have the tie pin. All that's left to do is finish off the prongs here so we can then use it on the actual tie itself. And then to be able to do that, all I'm going to do is grab my chain nose or flat nose pliers, it doesn't matter. I'm going to go in right at the end of my weave there and actually grab on top of my weave and a bit further down my pliers as well because we also don't want this bend we're going to do now to be too tight because obviously we want to make sure the tie itself from the side can fit into it quite easily but still snugly. So I'm going to grab onto here and then I'm going to press this, the end, so the prong there, around the back, towards the back of my word. Make sure it goes towards the back because obviously it will be the back of the tie. So bend it straight around towards the back. And then we can have a look at it. If it looks a little bit too wide, the opening there, you can always close it up a bit more. But then something like that, do the exact same thing on the other side. Grab onto the end of your wraps, bend the prong back on itself towards the back here. So it sits like this, you can see, and that's what's going to grab onto the tie this, around the sides of it. What I also just want to do to make it easier to use, the very tip of each prong, I'm going to grab onto that. Just keep hold of the prong itself so we don't kind of open it up and then I'm just going to gently give it a little kick outwards so you can see just like that and we can always close it or open it depending on obviously how the tie fits into it but just giving that little kick out here does it makes it much easier to get the tie in but it's still going to grab onto it as well so just the very tip of the prong, bend that outwards, doesn't have to be too much at all, just a gentle little kick outwards, because then the tie will slip in there really nicely and easily, and it's not going to be sticking out too much, so it's going to catch on anything or interfere with anything else. So there we go, that's the prongs bent around the back. So now all that's left to do is put this on your tie, because the actual tie pin now is done. So then just to demonstrate for you, I get my tie out here, so the tie that I want to put it on, of the actual tie pin, and then where you want to place it, just slot one side of the tie into one prong there, first of all. And then you can always adjust it depending how wide it is where the tie needs to sit, and then you just take the other side and slot that straight in there. You can see because of that little kick up we did, how easy it slots in, but because it's still tight enough to grab onto the tie without being too tight either. So it's when wearing it, it's not going to slide up and down the tie. It's going to sit just nicely where you want it to, where you obviously planned it from the beginning. So you can see you got the prongs in the back, and it just slides in and out just easily like that. And then that's your finished tie pin. So it's a pretty simple and easy thing to do, and you've got so many choices and possibilities of what you can do with both words or names, or also designs as well, using this as the basic technique. So I really hope that you enjoyed this tutorial and found it useful as well. And thank you very much for watching. Hello there everyone. In today's tutorial I'm going to show you how you can make your own kilt pin. So they can look like this. So I've got two versions here. I've got one where I made some loops on it. You can use that to add and attach things to it. But then I've also got one here without. So you can really make it however you want to depending on the project that you need it for. Because you can add decoration to here and it will be quite a nice piece of jewelry by itself. So if you want to learn how to make this kilt pin then keep watching. So all we're going